Hi boys and girls, Miss Lehman here. Going to read some more of our book, Dexter the Tough. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Chapter nine. I'm the new kid. On my first day here at King Elementary School, I beat up Robin Bryce. We were in the bathroom, but that doesn't matter. I was mad, but that doesn't matter either. The whole fight doesn't matter. It was no big deal. Hmm, Miss Abbott said. Dexter waited, trying not to squirm in the chair beside Miss Abbott's desk. It had been three days since the last time he'd workshop with Miss Abbott. She had said that morning that she was getting a little behind. But that's okay. Don't worry, she told the class with a little laugh. Lots of professional writers will take time off between drafts to think more deeply about their work. Dexter felt kind of proud of this version of his story. It didn't contain a single sentence fragment. He thought Miss Abbott would be impressed that he'd put in King Elementary School, giving it an exact name. And this draft told Miss Abbott, and anyone else who might read it, that the fight didn't matter. It wasn't worth worrying about. This was a safe story now. Dexter was feeling safer all around. He'd gotten really good at hiding out at recess. Thanks to the bushes, Robin would never be able to find him. When Mrs. Bryce called to see when Dexter was going to come over to get his bike, Dexter told Grandma to say his leg still hurt too much. He planned to let his leg keep hurting for a very, very long time. As far as he was concerned, the Bryces could just keep Uncle Ted's bike. Because of his hurt leg, Dexter was spending a lot of time in the house watching TV with Grandma. Even when Mom or Dad called, Dexter just said, Uh-huh, and uh-huh, and sure, fine. He didn't ask any questions. He kept his eyes on the commercials for toilet paper and Pepto-Bismol and aspirin the whole time he was on the phone. Hmm, Miss Abbott said again. I think it's time to try something different. What do you mean? Dexter asked. Sometimes professional writers experience a little experiment a little with their work, Miss Abbott said. Sometimes they'll write a scene from a different perspective to see if things sound different to help them understand all their characters' viewpoints. Sometimes they'll even pretend to be like a fly on the wall watching the action. There weren't any flies in the bathroom, Dexter said. He didn't know why, but he could feel panic rising in his stomach. Miss Abbott gave him a strange look. You could always pretend, she said. This is an imaginary fight you're writing about anyhow, right? Uh, right, Dexter said. This wasn't helping his panic. Maybe you mean that flies just wouldn't fit with the spirit of the story, Miss Abbott said. They'd change the mood too much. Yeah, Dexter said, that. Miss Abbott looked down at his story. I would agree with you, she said. That wasn't what I had in mind anyhow. I was thinking that you should try writing the whole story from Robin's point of view. Pretend you're him. Tell about the whole incident as he experienced it. That did it. Now Dexter's panic was on the verge of boiling over. Any minute now he might start throwing up or screaming or crying or running out of the room. I'm not Robin, Dexter said. Really, I don't even know him. Miss Abbott tapped her finger against Dexter's forehead. That's what the imagination is for. She said. She sat back, her eyes boring into Dexter's. Dexter had to work very hard to hold this panic down, to keep from letting her see how upset he was. Or... That's okay, she said slowly. You could ask him to help. Chapter 10. Dexter wasn't asking anyone for help. He sat hunched over his paper at Grandma's kitchen table. If I was Robin Bryce. No, erase. Try again. You said I had to pretend to be Robin Bryce, so erase again. Finally, after his eraser made holes in the paper and he had to skip down to the next line, he simply wrote, I am being Robin Bryce. He sat back trying to think what that would be like. He squinted down at his hand holding the pencil. He wanted to trick his eyes into seeing his hands and arms as bigger and flabbier and paler covered with Robin's pasty white skin. I am big, but I am not strong. I have comb tracks in my hair when I get to school in the morning. That was describing Robin, not telling about the fight. But Dexter didn't erase any of it. He pressed his pencil down harder and added, Last Monday I was in the bathroom before school started. This skinny little kid came in and beat me up. I found out later his name was Dexter. Dexter sat back in his chair thinking something was missing. 
He heard the phone ring in the living room. Quickly, before he had time to get distracted, he wrote, <clears throat> Robin was crying before Dexter hit him. Dexter! Grandma yelled from the living room. Telephone! Dexter flipped his paper over upside down as if he thought whoever was on the phone might be able to see it. I can't talk right now, he hollered back to Grandma. I'm doing homework. Grandma appeared in the doorway. It's your dad, she said. Usually, Dad didn't call. Usually, it was just his mom calling from the hospital hallway or waiting room. Usually, Dad was in too much pain to talk. Dexter took the phone. Hello, he whispered, like he thought talking loud might hurt Dad's ear. Hey, Dex, Dad said weakly. You know, I'm starting that experimental treatment tomorrow, and it's going to make me really, really sick for a while. Dexter didn't know how Dad could get any sicker. I thought you weren't going to have to do that, Dexter protested. I thought they were going to give you the marshmallow transplant. Bone marrow, Dad said. Remember? Bone marrow's the stuff that makes your blood. Dexter knew that. If he let himself think about it, he knew a lot of facts about blood and how his dad's didn't work right. But he wanted his dad to laugh the way he'd laughed last summer when Mom and Dad were talking about bone marrow transplant this and bone marrow transplant that, and Dexter had accidentally flubbed the name. It became a family joke. Dexter had even drawn a picture of Dad eating globs of marshmallow fluff and telling it, Don't go to my stomach. Go to my bones. Then they'd found out that nobody in the family had the right kind of bone marrow to give to Dad. Nobody they knew matched. I thought they were looking all over the world for someone to help you, Dexter said. They are, Dad said, but I can't wait forever. I've got to try this other treatment because, because right now it's my only chance. Dexter swallowed hard. There wasn't anything he could say to that. And Dexter, Dad said, before I do this, I just wanted to tell you, I love you very, very much. You know that, don't you? Yes, Dexter whispered. I'm so proud of you. I feel so lucky to have such a wonderful son. Dexter bent his head down because he didn't want Grandma to see how he'd lost control of his face all of a sudden. He could feel it twisting and bunching up, his mouth opening like it had decided on its own that he needed to let out a huge wail. But bending his head meant that Dexter was looking right now at his homework paper. Even though it was upside down, the paper was thin enough that he could still see through the other side. He could still read, Dexter hit Robin, upside down and backward. Daddy wouldn't be proud of me if he knew what I did, Dexter thought. He wouldn't think I was a wonderful son then. Dexter slid his hand over the top of his homework paper, but that didn't seem like enough, so he crossed his arms over the paper and leaned forward, so he was practically lying on it, his ear pressed against the phone. No matter what happens, Dad was saying. Dexter couldn't listen. He was concentrating too hard on covering over those awful words, and he was concentrating too hard on holding himself together, not wailing, not screaming, not throwing the phone down, not ripping the paper up, not crying. Goodbye for now, Daddy said. Dexter nodded, even though he knew Daddy couldn't see him. The phone clicked, then the dial tone came on, too loud and buzzing. Somehow, Dexter couldn't bring himself to let go of the phone. Grandma stepped up beside him and eased the phone away from his ear. She slipped the homework paper out from under his arms and into his backpack, and then she did a funny thing. She sat down in a chair and lifted Dexter into her lap. She put her arms around him and held him tight like he was a really little kid, a baby even. Dexter didn't mind at all. And that's the end of chapter 10. I think Dexter is really dealing with a lot of emotions with his dad being so sick and him not being able to help at all. I wonder what's going to happen with his dad, with Dexter, with Robin, and with the whole story. We'll come back tomorrow for another segment. Have a good day.